It was being marched back to our compound one day and a German in fatigue uniform was coming along the other way and the thought went through my mind, oh you lucky fellow, you're free, you'll go down to the pub tonight, probably have a bit of a cuddle with your girlfriend and I wish I were you sometimes. And then I thought, why can't I become him? And I cooked up an idea and I went back into the camp full of enthusiasm, put the idea to the senior British officer, squad leader Padden, who was known as Auntie Padden, I can't think why, there was nothing auntie-ish about that one, um, and other senior officers. And old Padden was all for it. It meant that I would make a German uniform, a fatigue uniform, very, very simple and modify our own cap into a German one. Um, but it was the first time anybody was going to use a German uniform and there was a lot of controversy about this. Um, I remember squad leader McComb in particular was dead against it. He said, you, you're asking to be shot for wearing a, an enemy's uniform. Well, decided to have a go at it. So. Having made all the arrangements, everybody was in on it, went to the football field and as we were coming back, when I saw that everything was right, I gave a signal for action and everybody knew what to do. I had positioned myself in this guarded column. We had guards in front, guards behind and then one or two guards along the column. And I positioned myself immediately behind one of these guards on the column. Um, we had no great coats. We, we used to put a blanket round us to keep warm. It was November, bitterly, bitterly cold on the, on the Baltic coast. Um, so we had, some of us had blankets round us. So I had my blanket round me with my German uniform underneath and, and my German cap I was holding in my hand so I was bareheaded. And when I gave the signal, um, some of the chaps pointed up there like that uh, to make the guards look up. Um, some of the chaps swelled out in the column to obscure the view of the next guard behind me just sufficiently. There was a machine gun tower up there which was overlooking the whole thing. Two chaps in, the, in, in our prisoners compound started a fight to attract the attention of the German in the box with the machine gun and I whipped off the blanket, put on the hat, uh, got a little sack with a few goodies in it over my shoulder, turned back, walked back down the column and I got away with it. Now they made another mistake, the Germans, instead of counting us before they let us into our compound, they opened the gates, put us in the compound and then counted us to see that the same no number had come back as went out. Security measure, pretty good, but they should have counted us outside. Because on this occasion, another part of the setup, there were five chaps running round and round the compound, our compound, and as this body of football fans came in, these five chaps ran into our column, our crowd, and everybody said, look out, what, what do you think you're doing barging in? For goodness sake, look where you're going. Sorry, sorry, said they. But five ran in and only four ran out. And that put the numbers right. So the Germans didn't realise that there was somebody missing. Um, I was now inside the German compound. Uh, with their barrack blocks and the sick bay and all that sort of thing. And I got to get out of that. And I couldn't go through the gate because there, were, there was a check system on the gate. So I got to go over the wire. It was an eight foot wire, um, but, but not a double fence like ours with an entanglement in the middle. It was just a single uh, high barbed wire fence, about eight feet high. So I'd got to go over the top of that. It was very important the chap in the goon box was, uh, had his attention still on the fight uh, and, um, and I had to 
go round to the back of some of the goon barrack, uh, the German barrack blocks. And the Germans being the hardy souls they are, although it was bitterly cold, it was a sunny day, and there were three Germans sitting outside their block chatting in the sunshine. And I came around with my little sack and they stopped talking and looked at me and I thought, uh oh, that's done it. They don't know me, they're wondering who I am. They're wondering why I'm walking around to the back of the barrack block where there's no place to go, no reason to go. Somebody is going to say, hello, who are you? And then my problem was solved. At the bottom of the fence there were some hutches with rabbits in. And I went up to the rabbit hutches, got my sack off and fiddled and faddled about and these chaps thought, oh, he's feeding the rabbits. So that's all right. So they went on chatting and I threw my bag over, climbed up, jumped over the wire. The only trouble was it had held things up a bit and the fight had stopped and now the machine gunner was standing there looking around. And that was a little bit of a worry. Anyway, I got away with it, ran off. <laughs> um, I made it to a, 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 a sliver of wood which opened up into a bigger wood and I made for that for immediate cover. I suppose it was about a hundred yards or so. I got in there panting, I think as much from fear as exertion. Um, it started to crawl through this cover which was slim, it was a narrow belt. And then I heard a voice, a German, talking. Oh, God. So I went down on my belly and I listened. And it was an obviously a German uh, talking with terms of affection. And I thought, oh, oh, a guard has got a bird in the wood here, lucky fellow. Um, and I thought, well, I'd better see where he is. I uh, crawled forward and there was a German guard with a guard dog. He was talking to the dog, talking to this Alsatian German shepherd, saying, oh, the lovely dog, oh, the beautiful dog. The dog was gazing into his eyes and thinking, yes, you're all right too. Oh boy, I managed to skirt round this lot and got away. <laughs>